Welcome to the Recon Trader. In today's video, I will share with you how I use the Fibonacci retracement tool to help me ID probable support and resistance price targets. Now, with that being said, I'm not going to take a deep dive into the Fibonacci sequence itself. I will perhaps in the future do a video where I break that down. So now might be a good time to shoot that subscribe button so you don't miss out on future videos like that one. All right, if you've been watching my past videos where I break down probable Bitcoin price targets, for whether they're bullish or bearish, then you're familiar with how I've been using the Fibonacci retracement tool. However, you may not have seen how I actually draw and drop it in. In this case, I actually have the Fibonacci retracement tool drawn in on the Bitcoin one week chart. And so each candle represents one week. And we had been monitoring the key level on the Fibonacci level of 618 ever since Bitcoin sold off back into May. And that 618 level was right around that 30,000 level where you can see Bitcoin sold off into and rejected from. Again, sold off, rejected, actually did breach down below, but then recovered. And again, sold off and breached down below, but never closed below the 618 level, which was a key level for me. If Bitcoin was to close below the 618 level, then there was a possibility Bitcoin could sell off down into the 786 Fibonacci level, which would have put us around 21,000. However, on the flip side, I had indicated that if Bitcoin could get above the 50% level, which was 37,000, then the next level for Bitcoin bulls to achieve would be the 382 level on the Fibonacci, and that was around 43,600. And this past week, the bulls were able to actually close just above that around 43,008. And today's Monday, so this week's candle is very fresh. However, the bulls are charging up above that 382 level. And they are looking at a lot of open air towards the top side. Now, I would say we're probably going to hit some resistance around the 51,000 level, which was prior support. But after that, then we're really looking at 60,000 and then perhaps a new all-time high somewhere above 65,000. And that is kind of a quick breakdown of how I was using the Fibonacci retracement tool. But I don't think I ever actually dropped it in for you to see how I draw that in. So now let's get a little further into the weeds and I'll actually drop in a Fibonacci retracement tool so you can see how I do it. And I'll be using the Bitcoin 4-hour chart for this particular demo. Now I do actually have the Fibonacci tool marked as one of my favorites in TradingView. So I have quick access to it up here in this toolbar. These are tools I often use so they are not actually buried over here in the traditional toolbar on the left. But with that being said, you can easily find the Fibonacci retracement tool by clicking on the third item down and that will pop up a variety of different tools. And if you scan down, you'll find the Fibonacci retracement tool. And so if you give that a click, you now are able to draw in your Fibonacci tool. Now, the way I use this tool works for me, and there are other ways that people will use this particular tool. This just happens to be the way I use this tool, and it has been very profitable for me over many years. And so with that being said, what I do is I go from the low, which we see down around the 28.8 level, and I swing up to the high, which was 64.8 and change. And it will drop in the different levels. Now you can actually go into your settings of the tool and you'll find your coordinates. And that is the low to the high. And in this case, I can actually dial this in a little cleaner to the 28.8 level. And I know our all-time high was 64.854. And that will make a slight adjustment to where those levels actually are placed. And then you can also select what levels you actually want to look at. Now for me, I obviously want 0, the 382, the 618, the 1, the 50%, the 786, the 168, the 1272, and the 272. Those are the levels that I use most frequently, and most of your bigger institutions use those same levels, and that's why I'm interested in those levels. And with those levels dropped in, they're going to be a little different on the 4-hour chart than they are on the weekly chart. And we can see that the 618 level represents almost dead on the resistance level we have been running up against ever since Bitcoin sold off in May. And that's the 42.5 level. We hit resistance here. 
It acted as resistance again recently once we did recover from the sell-off. And so that is a valid level of resistance. However, with that being said, it's now acting as a level of support. So 42.5 is going to be a key level of support. Now that we have closed above that level, we will look for that level to act as support. We break down below that 42.5 or the 618 level, then we could be headed back down towards the 786 level, which is 36.5. And again, most recently, 36.5 in this region was a huge level of resistance. We could not get above that level. But with that being said, once we did, we have seen a nice move up and we have come back down and it is acting somewhat as support. So now looking up, the bulls are looking at the 50% level, which is 46.8 or around the 47,000 level to be our next level of resistance and is often the case prior support right in this area and this area here turns into resistance now if the bulls are able to press above that 50 percent level then their next level they're targeting will be the 382 level which is right around 51,000. and we can see that acted as support back here and support right in here and more than likely that will act as resistance if the bulls continue to push up towards all-time new highs now let's take into consideration we don't know all this price action after reaching an all-time new high. How could we have used the Fibonacci retracement tool to at least given us clues that perhaps this big sell-off was coming? If I drag my chart over and eliminate all the price action up until the all-time high and actually just a little after as we saw that first wave of the sell-off now I can drop in the Fibonacci retracement tool as a guide for probable future price action so we come down here to the low of around 28.8 which we do see act as resistance and as support back here in January and then draw up to the all-time high of around 64.8 and again I can go into my actual tool and adjust my coordinates so I'm right on the numbers I want to be and that's 28.8 and 64.854 and so now we can see our levels up into the 64.854 all-time new high and if we saw this recent sell-off in Bitcoin we actually see support come in at the 382 level However, we bounce and break down further, and this time we break right into the 50% level, and we bounce from that level. So at this point, we have seen the 382 level act as support, only to end up being breached, and then the 50% level steps up as support. Now, the 50% level for me was a key level during this time frame of around 47,000. If we broke down through that 47,000 level, that to me was going to be a red flag. And so if we scroll over to the price action we know that has now since happened, we did get a bounce there. We failed to get back up to the all-time highs. We get rejected at a pretty heavy resistance level. And at that point, we come back down and retest the 50% level. We get a bounce. However, at that point, we do end up eventually breaking through the 50% level. And where do we find support? Lo and behold, at the 618 level. So if you were to go short on the break of the 50% level, you might take profit or partial profit at the 618 level. Now we find support and get a bounce. However, we do then crush down through the 618. Now that leads into the big sell-off where Bitcoin did actually sell off all the way down to the 30,000 level. However, the price quickly wicked back up above the 786 level on the Fibonacci and that's around 36.5 and proceeded to recover but found resistance at again the 618 level at that 42.5 and then sold back off and and then did basically chop around in between our 28.8 and that 42.5 level. And so basically that 618 level was a key level for the bulls to get back above. However, at one point when Bitcoin did get rejected again up around that 41,000, 42,000 level and broke down below the 786 level and hit 28.8 once again. And I want to point out some similarities as well. If we check our six and look back, 
we see this run up of Bitcoin basically reject at the 618 level, break down below the 786 level, and where does it go? 288. We get that same exact move here. And then back here, before the big run up, Bitcoin actually finds resistance at the 786 level. And lo and behold, we found that same resistance just recently at the 786 level. And Bitcoin sold off to 29.2. Well, again, if we look back and check our six, finding that resistance at 786, Bitcoin sells off right into 29.2. And so we can actually see where that 786 level played a key role. And then again, looking back and checking our six, we see Bitcoin finally breach and close above that 786 level, come back, test it for support, and then run up. And then again, recently, we get that same action. It goes above the 786 level comes down and tests support right around 37.3. And again, if we look back here, that same support was at 37.3. And then the next move pushed it up above the 618 and then eventually ran into resistance around the 50% level. And right now that price action has pushed above 618 and more than likely we're gonna run into some resistance at the 50% level, which again, we saw as previous support on numerous occasions, support here, support in this area, support a couple times here, a little bit of support before the big sell-off. So more than likely, that's going to be a fairly strong level of resistance up there around 47,000. And so the Fibonacci retracement tool is one of many weapons in my arsenal that I use. Now I can also just take a look at the chart and eyeball some resistance. And in this case, 41,000 is a line I have drawn in this yellow line that runs through here. You can see was resistance back here and acted as resistance multiple times during the recent sell off. And so you can kind of use the Fibonacci levels along with other resistance levels as zones to keep an eye on. And with that all being said, I think I'm going to go ahead and wrap this up. I just wanted to do a really quick video to show you how I actually use the Fibonacci retracement tool to ID possible support and resistance levels. And this video has gone on way longer than I anticipated. So if you like this video, do me a favor, spike a like. If you like videos like this, you might want to shoot the subscribe button as this is the type of content I typically do create. If you have any questions or comments, drop those in the comments section down below and remember never send your money into battle without first doing your recon see you in the next video